Hello, Tom here from the Rhode Island Budo Academy. Uh, I want to talk about Same or pressure when you're practicing your Iaido. Uh, the version of Iaido that we practice here at our school is called Iaido Jitsu. So we maintain a lot of the combative concepts within uh, the Iaido Waza or techniques. So pressure or Same in Japanese is a real important concept in any combative uh, concept or anything competitive. Whether you're playing a sport or doing a different martial art, you understand very quickly that pressure is either received or given. And it's hard to understand that sometimes when you're a new practitioner of the idol because you're by yourself. So if you don't have that opponent in front of you giving that pressure back, it, it's hard to get a hold of that sometimes. And I'm going to help you with that today. And so when you're practicing the idol, all the movements in your waza, no matter what they are, it's in between those movements that you are vulnerable. And that's where you really need to emphasize pressure or you will be defeated, okay? It's like leaving an opening. It's like two boxers boxing and there's an opening and, and, and you get hit. Even the very first movement in your, in your sword draw has to exhibit pressure, okay? Your center, your center of balance, your breathing, everything is forward here, even with the very first movement. This movement, for instance, right before you bring your sword out, is often missed. The very first movement with the sword handle is missed often. Rather than just pull your sword out the draw in a sloppy manner, what if you miss and you haven't given your opponent any pressure yet? Well, you're going to be defeated. So you push the sword out. You don't grab it and pull it out. You push it out. This, in your opponent's face, will give them a sense of this, okay? So here, then turn your sword with your left hand, then do your cut, okay? Now I'm gonna turn the sword sideways, which is an incorrect posture, but you'll be able to see better with the background. When you get your sword ready, to do the big cut by putting it over your head, we call that furikaburi, you need to give pressure here too, because when you do this, guess what? You're vulnerable. But if you give some pressure first, that gives you the time to bring the sword over your head properly. Because if you rush it, it's not gonna be a good technique. But if you give yourself the time by putting on the pressure, then you will have the time to do this. Then you do your big cut. You are going to be vulnerable as soon as you start doing your chiburi, whether it's a flick or whether it's a wet umbrella, a moiru. So what do you have to do? Pressure first. Now at the beginning I tell students, just show us pressure with the sword tip. And then once they get better at it, I tell them connect your left hip to the sword tip. Now your whole body's engaged. And then once you get more advanced, I tell folks your whole center, your whole breathing, your abdomen, it all goes forward here. It's a Different feeling, okay? Here's your flick chiburi. Now, when you put your sword away, that's when you're most vulnerable. Again, I'm gonna turn the sword incorrectly again so you can see better. Pressure, 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 pressure. Now watch my left hand as I do this. Pressure, pressure. Then I do that part quickly because I'm very vulnerable when I'm here. Pressure, pressure. Whoa. Now, as I'm putting my sword away, I have a sense of pressure here with my whole abdomen, my hara, my center. I am tense. I'm not just relaxed putting the sword away. I have a lot of tension in my body right now in case I need to come out and draw quick. Okay, here, secure the sword. This is called the ayagosh. Your knees are slightly bent. I know you can't see them in the camera, but I wanted you guys to really see my upper body movements for this video. Left foot goes back, but you can see I'm not really shifting back. I'm still focused on my fallen opponent here. One, two, three. By the time I reach my third step, I'm almost relaxed. And then when I put my hands back to my sides, that's when I'm done. That's called Zanshin. Okay? 
So what's the point I'm trying to make here? It's in between these techniques that you're most vulnerable and that's where you need to seek out where you need to apply that pressure. And that's gonna open up so many opportunities for you to see in all the different ways that you practice and you're gonna enjoy it a lot more. I hope this video helps. I appreciate you watching. We all appreciate your support and thank you very much and stay safe.